Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So today's upload is a video about the potential for a heavy snow threat. Not a particular snowstorm or a snow event, just uh, overall in the long range it's looking fairly likely, likely for snow across the northern US, uh, into the northeast and the Great Lakes. So I just decided to make a video also talking about the long range in general as well, the pattern. So let's get in, right into this. Um, video before we do however consider subscribing to this channel consider liking this video it really means a lot to me and it really supports this channel so if you if you if you could give me a subscription that would be amazing as well as a like on a video thank you so much really means a lot so right now we're looking at uh, the GFS and the GFS has been interesting it's been showing it's been actually fairly good this year I mean if you recall we had uh, a fairly big arctic air mass across the country and it's still going on across many locations uh, you know below average temperatures across a good portion of the country however again I want to emphasize the GFS has been you know the outlier in terms of showing this arctic mass way before any of the other models were showing it, so the GFS has been a fairly good, you know, model. And if we were to look at the uh, long range in terms of temperatures, there's some uh, interesting signs, if you will. So right now we're looking at uh, chillier temperatures across the eastern U.S. and the northeast as well, warmer across the west. However, we witness uh, a little bit of a pattern change. The cold air kind of really struggles to maintain itself while the warm air invades most of the uh, two-thirds. Uh, even three fourths, uh, two thirds of the Western country, getting uh, up until the Mississippi River, I would say, based on this. But uh, not really, uh, you know, making it too far. It, it does develop a storm system on Thursday, Friday, which could be significant. You know, we'll have to keep watching that, which is one of the first, one of the first many snow threats that will be bringing snow to the country. But then notice behind it, a nice little cool air mass. Nothing ridiculously below average, but still chilly. Um, and then you can see it kind of reinforces itself and sticks around and moves into the southeast for a good portion. This is now November 25th. We start seeing a weakening pattern again, but then not before long we see another uh, Arctic mass you can see coming this one a bit stronger so really no relief I would say up until at least December uh, with the cold air we don't know what's gonna happen in December at, at this point uh, it's still a little bit far to say but uh, you know we'll just have to wait and see what, what exactly the models are gonna show however uh, again we are looking at some uh, interesting interesting patterns going on for sure uh, I mean notice how uh, we see uh, you know, potential nor'easter right here marked by those cold con uh, below average conditions. So let's go to the MSLP and precip. Basically shows us the precipitation that's occurring at uh, the surface and the, uh, the sea surface uh, or the pressure, which is also very vital to forecasting the weather. Um, so obviously uh, when there's a high pressure, it's marked by this blue right here it is a little bit of higher pressure, usually associated with, uh, during the winter time, colder, drier, calmer conditions, while a low pressure means snowier or wetter or just stormier, nastier weather. Uh, that's just all, you know, that's not even just for winter time, that's usually a pretty, uh, you know, seasonal, uh, pretty, every season has that pretty universal. So, if we look through this, again, we have that nor'easter, mainly a rain threat, it seems, for a good, you know, the most of the northeast, however, some locations in Maine and New Hampshire and Vermont will definitely get several inches out of this, and it will be, you know, some several good inches out of this, it won't be just a few, one or three, I mean, some of these locations can get up to eight or ten, however, uh, the thing is that it's not going to be across the wide location, it's going to be fairly isolated, so that's the thing. Uh, if we were to uh, look at this on, uh, into the future cast, notice how by Thursday we have a ridging pattern across the central United States right there. And this uh, brings in a lot of Gulf of Mexico moisture, which, okay, not a lot, but it also has a lot of Pacific moisture. But it definitely taps into some of the Gulf of Mexico moisture. At this time of the year, the Gulf of Mexico moisture is more reluctant, more hesitant to give its moisture to the north. Uh, kind of an interesting way to put it, but I mean really some of these low pressures are gonna be you know uh, Strengthened by this in the winter time this one Yes, but not really you can see it's not really that well organized has a little bit of snow quite a bit of rain to it But not not a lot of snow at all um, has some chilly air behind it But uh, you know some of the earlier models were showing maybe a, a bigger snowstorm out of this at this point mainly in Rainmaker across a good portion of the country, and around a week from now. So that would be pretty interesting to see what happens with that. 
Notice though, after this, yesterday, if you recall, we were talking about uh, the G GFS and European <clears throat> agreeing about a certain storm in the southern U.S. It was tracking through Kansas, Missouri, southern Illinois. And at this point, you can see it's still there. And the European actually agrees with the GFS relatively on this. A little bit of snow across these locations. But look, it transpires into a big coastal storm. And I want to, you know, emphasize this isn't awfully far out at around 200 hours you know we definitely are going to see a lot of changes but i you know the storm system will most likely be there whether or not the cold air overlies with it or if it meets with the canadian air will be a tough one to see or you know the, or the track whether it tracks a little bit further off coast or if the conditions are a little bit warmer or cooler the european which i'll show you in just a minute does have that storm has it but doesn't have it, the snow component with it here so that'll be interesting notice at least quite a bit of cold air behind it we get a little bit of a warm-up a low pressure trying to develop and it does so across an east very extreme northeastern united states and then we get more cold air with a little bit of snow so you can see overall there are some pretty decent snow chances despite that one system mainly being a rainmaker uh this upcoming week here, let's look at total snowfall um this is a little bit of a weird thing because the sometimes the GFS does this glitching little uh, where you can see it has like these weird discolorations. But overall, you can see uh, the northeast actually, according to this model, gets quite a bit of snow, and uh, the mountainous northwest or just the west gets quite a bit of as well. And you know, November you usually don't see a lot of snow. I think the average for uh, uh, Illinois or Chicago is I actually have no idea. I mean, I think it's maybe five six inches for November which may seem like a lot but I mean we already had four inches five inches so we're already off to a uh, above average start if you look at the Canadian snowfall like you can see uh, mainly across the northeast and northern US as well so that's interesting to note how uh, you know this early out, I mean, this is till November 25th, and already looking at some decent snows. So, I, I would say that a lot of snow is coming for the northern U.S., you know, uh, especially since it's not going to be really warm, and whenever it's not warm, it's going to be pretty chilly. <laughs> Obviously, the opposite of warm is cold, chilly. And, you know, when there's November time frame, it may not be cold enough to, for it to be, uh, you know, a big snowstorm out of a, a rainmaker, but uh, it may be still, uh, you know, relatively cold enough to produce uh, quite a bit of snow that wouldn't be normally there. And again, look at these snow amounts, they're pretty impressive. Now, I wanted, I wanted to show you the European model about this big storm. Uh, notice how it has, you know, the progressive pattern wave after trough, after ridge. We see this storm system right here. Look at that. Around 993, we have a fairly strong storm system. However, it does not show it with uh, with rain or with snow. If I were to go on weathermodels.com, um, I want to show you that the European... I Sorry, I should have really opened this earlier, but... I want to just quickly... This My computer is pretty quick today, so that's the, you know, the good thing. Um, if we were to look at this... Uh, this European which I am on right now it shows again very similar storm system across what's going on right now across the East Coast right there you can see some heavy rain not really a snowmaker until it reaches into uh, the extreme portions of Maine or which uh, it could release up to you know a foot of snow I would say uh, can, uh, liberal you know that's like the ex most I think it will release I don't think much more but very localized again the European also shows that storm system across Thursday uh, that you can see Thursday time frame right there a little bit more disconnected than uh, what the GFS had then it's right there the kind of the southern component to this and if we were to play this into motion we see that uh, the northeast or the system uh, come on come on let's go uh, is uh, occurring uh, right here across the south gathering its strength if you will right there and it moves off into the northeast but it does not have the cold uh, snow component to it now will it in the future it may we may see that transition to it we may not we may, the GFS may be misleading us but again the GFS has been pretty doggone good with these systems and if the European were to shift to this then we're you know most likely gonna see this but you can see it now has a nice storm as well pretty dog dog on nice storm which would be uh which which is impressive let's look at the total snowfall amounts for the uh, european model which again is relatively high for this time of the year uh given that many of these locations shouldn't even be seeing snow uh, you know of any significance at this time of the year so let's wait for this to load 
Now notice the European doesn't have really uh, significant amounts for the US because it doesn't have that nor'easter across the northeast. But notice how it has really, really significant amounts across Canada and uh, the Quebec, Ontario, I mean all the provinces, New Labrador and Fonda, Nova Scotia. All these you can see are just getting slammed by heavy snow and within, you know, within a certain time frame this will shift slowly to the south as we will see. Uh, you know the uh, the the pattern and the you know winter kind of setting into the U.S. more and further to the south, and we'll see the storms. You know we'll see this type of snow across our area, and this is actually a really good sign. Uh, may not may not seem disconnect may seem disconnected, but when we see heavy snow across southeast Canada and just southern Canada of this magnitude, we know that there's plenty of precip going on across the United States. Uh, that's why these storms get so big. They you know they take a lot of the precip from the United States, if you will, and uh, they they get really strong. It's just that the, there's still not enough cold air across the United States to really make these storms happen across the lower 48. But across a little bit further to the north, I mean seriously, just a little bit north of Maine right there you can see very heavy snows are going to be occurring so that is that is interesting to note and I just wanted to point that out we you know that will probably most likely shift to the southern US or south into the northern US within say the next month at least you know at the very minimum uh, probably within the next half month so thank you guys so much for watching consider liking the video consider subscribing to the channel I'll catch you all guys on the next episode see ya bye